This is James's meal for today. And I've let him decide if he wants the hemp hearts on his stuff. Um, this side, the oh, the the left side is organic today, which is very nice. And um, we have some. The the peas are from Guatemala, and the dogs do not like these peas. But anyway, okay. uh, I'm going to talk about this book, Prey Dancing, and. The criminalist today and then I I guess I don't know if we're gonna stay out for very long yeah I think we will actually now that I've got out it's and I'm nice feeling a little bit better I was having to sit for a while last week I hurt my back while I was um, getting the groceries the free food from the Salvation Army and then I didn't do the smart thing and rest I decided oh well next day I think I can handle doing laundry well, that was a bad idea. So the that made it worse. Heavy. Uh, sometimes yeah. it doesn't spin out. Uh, and anything. then, after that, we went on a hike because I, well, I haven't uploaded the videos yet, but you will see them. Um, some very nice, nice videos we took on that hike. But that yeah, just totally a, killed my a, back. It was awful. I didn't even know if I'd be able to walk today. Let alone, like it was so bad yesterday and the day before. But we. Yesterday we worked on some songs. That was fun. A couple of songs, yeah. actually. Uh, so it was we good. basically yep. had the lyrics. We worked a little bit on the lyrics. Uh, well, I, I'd written the lyrics a while, long time ago. And um, yeah, anyway. And so we um, were trying to look through, find the secondary accents in the in the stuff because I hadn't written tunes for those ones first. Because I wanted James to teach me his way of making music for the lyrics and it's the Elvis Costello way. With a couple, I don't know, maybe half. I did half of mine my way, and then I did half of them where I didn't think of any any song for them first, so that James could teach me his way. But as it turned out, we just, I just did my thing anyway. We didn't do the tunes for yesterday. For the um, stuff. I was working out the rhythms. I know. So that's. Uh, you were trying. Uh, and I didn't come up with the. Uh, no, and we might come up with. You uh, might come up with the tunes some eventually. Like they like, say, the melody is basically half rhythm. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, if you say tunes and you mean the the pitches, then I, I no, mean you the, came up with the, the pitches. Music. I came up with the music. The music is. I didn't look 50%. at the rhythm at all. I didn't look at what we've done because I don't know how to do it that way. I see what you're saying. Yes, so whatever we came up with for music yesterday was just me. You have to add to it however you, because I don't know how you do it still. Do you see what I'm saying? I see what you're saying now. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, I ended up recording a few melodies for the stuff for, you know, trying, oh, is this right, is this right? I don't know. I don't know if it's right. I don't know how to do it this way. So we'll we'll see. James seemed to like the one sound of it. Okay, the sad song. Oh, I liked uh, what we got for both of the. It's it's, uh, it's important to get stuff. So you can use all those hemp hearts if you want, or none of them if you want. So. I guess I will talk about this one. Well, I, you know what? I'll talk about them both at the same time. Oh. These bees, incidentally, don't get your hopes up. But I know. They're so bad. They are awful. Yeah. Uh, the dogs won't eat them. I've tried them on the dogs, and they're like, that's not food, you know? And they should like peas. But they don't like the like the peas from this brand. or the See, they come in this, this little... They come two bags and a thing of peas, and they're hung up by the some twine there and it looks really cute but they don't taste good. Now they're and called English peas. They're blaming them on the English I guess. So. But well, they come from uh, I've Guatemala, never tasted right? peas that taste like this. They're not good. I've tasted them and they're ones that have been in the shell too long. Oh yeah 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 those are terrible. That's what these taste. Yeah. They're, uh, but they're small so they shouldn't be like that. Well it depends on yeah some of them it, the way to tell is see. Yeah, you're like right. They're squared off. That if they're square, that's too bad. That's been in the pot too long. Yeah. 
Okay, well, anyway, this one, I neither one of these are done yet. I, I did a James, so I'm on page 336 out of 341 in this one, but I, I don't think that I'm going to hit any big surprises in that amount of pages. Um, but this one was published by Avon, and so when I pick up these books from the basement collection of books that I got for free, um, when I pick the Avon books out, I'm not really expecting a whole lot, you know? Now, um, I had started this one before, and I only got to page 74, and already I was like, okay, well, what's the mystery? You know, there's a few mysteries that were solved along the way, like why he had, um, at the beginning of every chapter, he has uh, some sort of um, sex trade lingo in here. Upper is a female who hires a male for an episode of sex. That's number one. And so then, you know, for a while I was reading and I'm like, what does that have to do with... But eventually it's like, no, he's going to use all this terminology. So you got to know this because he's giving you a definition in at the beginning of the chapter, which I don't know if this was really a great way to do it. He should have just had a glossary in the back, honestly. Because when I... The, for the first while when I was coming across these things, I'm like, what does this, why am I get, given this? So anyway. You can forget. Yeah. Um, what did I write down here? Uh, this is a Dr. Claire Bertinol mystery. I've never come across one of these before. There's interesting scientific info right off the hop. Page 4, chlorine gas reacts with formaldehyde to produce bischloromethyl ether, a cancer producer. Page 5. Polyvinyl chlorine body bags were put into the complete disposal kit, but these bags release highly toxic dioxins when burned. Packing the dead girl's orifices. Page 6. Might be a bit creepy for some to read about. Never occurred to me that this was done. I suppose I'd never given much thought at all to what care the dead received by people. It made me think about how many people don't receive care when they're alive. Anyway. Now, um... Especially uh, people who are lined up for surgeries in Canada, yeah. in particular in Alberta, are being shunted aside for people who don't give a flying flock. I'm spelling that with that. Uh, right. About other people. And uh, they're stressing their free dumbs. It's okay. dumb, they're dumb and they're free. Okay. So, I had started with this book. And there's actually quite a collection of books I've started now that I've went, this is just not for me. So anyway. And in other words, you've done a James, another type yeah. of James, and you've just gone through 10 pages or something like that, and you filed them no, under. No, I go through, like this one, I got 74. You know, so it's you're going to go finally, through it. I'll get through it eventually, but I just decided, oh, this is really dragging. So this was the author of Lovejoy Mysteries, and I, I'd heard of Lovejoy. And I, so I figure, well, maybe that's that. And I, and so I thought, well, this guy must be popular. And um, he's, uh, yeah, best-selling Lovejoy mystery series. So, on, honestly, I don't know. He was a practicing medical doctor and lives in Colchester, England. And so I don't know. There's some of the some of the speaks really English, British, and uh, there's a lot of. Finally, when I gave up on it, it was um, this one guy. He's talking. There's a they they say not to do this when you're writing a book. Like if you're writing dialogue, then write how people speak, right? But when eventually he's he was maybe this guy was thinking this way or something like. Um, page 73. Needles got legit were clean, right? That didn't mean he had it too, did it? She'd not been well, okay, when he'd put her in casualty. Nurse, he collared had been snooty. I'm on pediatrics. The I'm on pediatrics is the only thing there that's in the quotation marks. Do you see that? So there was a whole lot of this where I this guy may be thinking this way yeah. and maybe he's he gets that he wants to Joyce Joyce did that a lot. Oh my gosh. Was this ever not worth having to deal with the stress of going through that? 
you know, if, if the book had been more enjoyable up until that point, but like I said, I still don't know what the mystery is. Page 74. So this one, once I started it, the main character suspect is a doctor psychiatrist. He seems innocent. The story is interesting. We're shown the victim right away. You know right away what's going on. You know what mystery needs to be solved. And it's an Avon book. And it's out competing this one. That's a bestseller from a bestseller author. Okay. Uh, first typo from the Avon book, page 27. That was unfortunate. Um, a bunch of weird italics on page 37. Like, honestly, I'll show you. I will show you this because it's so crazy. I underlined. Do you see all these things? And I... I at first I was like, Okay, so if you hold it still, maybe I'll do this. Okay. Um, what did I write down about it? Oh, I didn't write down how many. I should have written down how many italics were just in the space of one page. There's so many. So I'm looking at this, and I finally realized. Is it oh, in the other place? yeah, other it place? is. It's all over the place. It's em for emphasis. Right? That's what it is. So it's the guys trying to say, oh, well, this is how this person speaks. Is really emphasizing but oh my gosh it gets a little bit much so, so it's um, just the one person who speaks that way you he know what knows i knows it's a sin i i think it i always be. like to believe it's wrong yeah the guilt's eating me alive yeah i know yeah. it's really annoying it's really annoying even just to read it in my head it's annoying um I can't imagine if this had been made into a movie and somebody had actually spoken that way. Uh, it would Nobody would watch it. Anyway, um, page 136, Blockbuster might not be an ad. Page 140, Dunkin' Donuts is likely an ad. In the space of one page, 176 to 177, Pepsi is mentioned five times. Amico Station only I wonder once. if he's got an exclusive uh, contract with Pepsi. If you find a Coke, I'll I'll be impressed with his ability to sell himself. In less than half a page on 177, the word cigarette is used five times, but no brand name applied. So that was the same page where Pepsi was, right? Oh, they could have just put cola. So Pepsi, I would say, paid for ad space in this book. Um, perhaps a Radio Shack on page 199 and a Cools ad on page 206, but I can't know for cool, sure. Cools is a cigarette. Exactly, and so why wasn't it mentioned when the cigarettes were mentioned five times? They blew it. Right? So maybe I guess they just Cool's didn't pay only that paid much. for one page. Exactly. Or yeah. one, one mention. Now those guys, you know. Yeah. Um, so out of these two, you know, I'm I'm actually thinking this is entertaining. I, I got through this pretty quickly. I know it's an Avon book, and don't expect a whole lot out of it, but... Better now is that one. owned by the same company as the uh, as the perfume? I, yeah, I think so. Yeah. It makes sense. You know, I sort of. We see a lot of this lately with companies branching out, right? Well, it's uh, they've always done that. Like Hallmark, Generally, making they don't movies? do it that well, but yeah. uh, looks like Hallmark is doing it okay. Yeah. I've seen Avon. You'll find used books. They seem to date from the 60s or something like that, 70s. Mm -hmm. They seem to have the Avon in prime material. And so it's lasted. Usually when companies uh, move away from what they call in the Wall Street Journal and other places their core competencies, they fail. Mm -hmm. they got no clue. You know. Now, with these little bags of uh, Guatemalan peas, I was going to mention something about them, and I'm glad that I remembered. Um, I'm glad that I brought the things out so that I could remember. Somebody had asked me when I was picking them up for free from the Salvation Army, which I'm very thankful for them, even though they taste like crap. Um, they well, might they, be healthy, who knows? I, the dogs won't eat them. Yeah. So anyway, um, that's how I usually judge whether food is healthy. If it's do food that dogs would like to eat normally and they don't, I think, hmm, what's up with this? Anyway, Guatemalan peas. The packaging. Um, 
somebody at the Salvation Army who was volunteering there was saying, I don't know why they make the packaging like this. And I was thinking, well, I don't really know either. But um, I thought to myself, I think it has something to do with, like, it looks like some, like the two packages held together like that by the twine. It looks like something that would be draped over top of a mule, right? You, you picture Guatemalan and produce and you think of people hauling bags across a mule and out to market and whatever, right? So that's what I think they're going for there. And really, it's um, trying to attract people who uh, want to think that we're in a really affluent society where um, it reminds people we don't have to dra drape our produce across a mule. We can hire other people to do it for us. We can we can import from countries where where they they do that, and um, we can take our SUVs to pick up these cute little bags of peas. Um, and so then, I mean, they can they have this idea that um, in their minds they're uh, not exploiting people in Guatemala for these these disgusting peas. Um, uh, they think that they're kind of doing them a favor. Uh, you know, they they aren't aren't they wonderful helping out these what they would want to think is third world people when they're because they're so affluent. So it it helps um, people within our society feel perceive themselves as affluent, and at the same time. It makes them feel good that they're helping out poor people by buying their products. Do you see what I'm saying here? Uh, they're patronizing. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's uh, awful. So many people like that. They read novels and stuff like that. Yeah. And, well, that's what... And they're walking around thinking that uh, yeah. Arabs are walking around in burnouses and, and riding camels. And... It's not just militia type that think that way, or that people in Guatemala are romping around with mules and so on and mm -hmm. so forth. The vast so, majority of people of in Guatemala probably live in Guatemala City and other cities, Barrio, so on and so forth. So. And while they, they want to imagine that their produce has grown really, you know, an old-fashioned way, really cleanly and whatever. Well, I'm telling you, the dogs won't eat the peas. They won't eat them. So, you can imagine all you want about your Guatemalan peas. And I'm thankful for them because, well, we're poor and we're getting the food for free. So, anyway. And but the same folks who think Turkey's population is like 35 million. And I uh, think that... Uh, that this, uh, what's happening in Ukraine, is the worst thing, not since World War II in Europe, but since uh, Bosnia. Because uh, they don't have any clue about how big Bosnia is relative to the Ukraine. The Ukraine is more than, probably more than 10 times the population of Bosnia. Russia is probably something like um, maybe 14 times the population of. Uh, what Serbia was then, mm -hmm. probably still roughly around that time, 14. I'd say uh, Ukraine would, it depends on how you define it, the Russians have been stealing land from them for, actually for decades, from the Ukrainians, but uh, let's say 12 times the population of Bosnia. <laughs> so that's a, what it signed us got, <laughs> an order of magnitude <laughs> difference. Because really there's a lot That's of people... That's multiplying by a factor of 10. So <coughs> how much people don't understand that really down in the gut. Would you rather owe $100,000 or a million dollars? That's off by an order of 10. Or, oh, some people might owe maybe a million dollars or something like that. Half a million dollars. Let's say half a million dollars on a house in Toronto. You know, like I that. would rather owe a million dollars because... That would mean I'd be sitting in like some fancy posh thing. Well, if you, if 
I suppose if some people never get loans. Because nobody would ever give me a loan for a million dollars? So if I were yeah, I know. given a loan but, for a million dollars. Yeah. But 500000 or $5 million, which would you rather owe? Um, yeah. uh, Pauline says she'd rather owe that. I would rather owe... Well, I would rather owe nothing. That's the truth. I know. But uh, if uh, I'm just trying to get a way of people to compare about how much more serious what's happening in Ukraine is than Bosnia. I know, and I guess you're right. Like, I can say that, I can joke that I'd rather owe a million dollars, but I really wouldn't because you know me. Like, um, if I'm given, I was really upset about my credit card. They kept upping my limit because I would never go into the red. And so over, I don't know, 20, 25 years or something, they had it upped up. So I was like, I could borrow $25,000 and I'm like, I don't want that. The most I ever owed in my life was 130 bucks. That's cumulative. That's not, that's uh, the only time I've ever borrowed money. Mm -hmm. I didn't have money to back it up. I borrowed money to buy my house, but I, I gave prepaid check. I had that money in the bank. I just wanted to maintain the money in the bank. Okay, something weird, wild and weird happened. But uh, mm -hmm. the only time I've gone into the red was for 130 bucks for I think my second year at university or something like that. So uh, 100, it seemed like so much money to me. But I had that paid off for the quickly. Mm -hmm. well, uh, at any rate. Uh, is it okay if we talk about the Ukraine? Or you oh yeah, you can talk about the Ukraine. Huh? So, this I is mean, a re-reviewing of uh, something that I already have read. We were it's talking about... Ukrainian. So, uh, this is uh, Kiev, written in Ukrainian way. Uh, and uh, it's a wonderful book. I just know that Kiev doesn't look as uh, wonderful. Anymore, yeah. As, in memory uh, of Kiev. Yeah. So, James was talking about how when he went there, well, was it was it the Ukraine or was it Russia when you went and um, they were making fun of your shoes? Oh, well, that was Russia. They, Russia. That's because when I had, knew things were in trouble. Because they had this idea that everyone here was wealthy because that's the... Cliché that commies were feeding. This is, well, that's the cliché that... Uh, to a large are, extent around the world. Yeah, that's, you go on TV, you watch TV and, well, Dynasty isn't the show anymore, but you have all sorts of people living really high on the hog and they just, I guess people think, oh, well, everyone lives that way, you know, and... and it's around the world, but it yeah. was particularly bad. Oh, they've been bought off by the capitalists and all this, so they're exploiting people all over the world. They're in North America and in Europe. We don't exploit. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, they were sending people to prison camps uh, doing slave labor. Absolutely shameful. Christianity, as someone said, got it's uh, the pride of Christianity that uh, they got rid of slavery twice. It's a shame of Christianity that it had to be twice. But Christianity got rid of it only had the commies and the fascists, the Nazis, really. But the commies uh, did it for much longer. Uh, to have them bring it back, you know, they were uh, they were anti-Christian, anti-religious in particular, anti-Christian, and then they bring slavery back. Brilliant, Russians and Chinese economists. Brilliant. Yeah. Anyway, uh, and uh, it would have been brought in other places like in Vietnam too. It's just uh, you know it wasn't uh, big enough to have gotten uh, uh, to critical mass, uh, so that it came to the attention of the world. That's the way economies operate, you can see how people are going around saying, "Oh, you know, like uh, literally, this is like within the last week, Putin is a capitalist." Okay, he's called the uh, the break so-called breakaway republics. Uh, that he's stolen from the Ukraine in the East. Uh, he's calling them the People's Republic of Luhansk and the People's Republic of Donetsk, okay? Uh, 
You can call him capitalist and all that sort of stuff. But he's a commie, you stupid idiots. Okay? So uh, I've heard that the leader, or misleader, of uh, Mexico is telling the... Uh, you, uh, at least he initially was. I hope he isn't anymore. Apparently he's a, a left-winger. I suspect he's a crypt, at the very least a crypto coffee supporter of Venezuela and Cuba. Uh, he's telling the Ukrainians to negotiate with the Russians. Hey, negotiate! You've got a Kalashnikov stuffed in your teeth. In fact, it's probably halfway down your throat. And you're supposed to negotiate. I'm telling you, the Ukrainians are negotiating pretty effectively with the Russians right now. In the only, or in the only language that the commies understand. What is it that Mao said? Power comes out of the barrel of a gun. That's all they understand. I'm not saying Chinese. I'm not saying Russian. But I am saying the Chinese and communists, Chinese and Russian communists. Well, it's That's all uh, they it's understand. Yeah, all they all understand. All aggressive people respect is aggression. Yeah. Um, if you're buying your Guatemalan teas and you know, subconsciously you're thinking, oh, I'm helping third world people by buying their peas or whatever, or whatever you're thinking. Honestly, it's not that these peas are good. Um, or if you're going to a restaurant and you're having people wait on you, serve you, or you're um, hiring in somebody to clean your house for you, or care for your kids for you, um, there's something wrong with you. With you. With you. You are hiring servants. You are renting slaves. That's what you're doing. And um, the people that do that are aggressive people. Not the people who hire. Mm -hmm. Not the people who Not the work. people who work. So you're like John Ruskin, who is a learned individual. I think he was a right winger, but uh, it's the same mindset. As for living, this is in the Victorian. As for living, our servants can do that for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. So. Um, and you may not have clued into it. You, you may have oh, never thought of it before. Oh, they're not cluing into it now, but because they're but just not into cluing into things. That's the truth. But everyone, the whole world is watching, or as Bruce Coburn saying, people see through you. Of course, he didn't realize that people were seeing through him too, but. Um, like uh, the we've been hearing things like on the radio the CBC you know oh what will we do about the migrant labor like they they hadn't even really clued into the fact that um, many people hadn't up until recently that uh, farm laborers aren't paid minimum wage not the same minimum wage that other people are paid so there's something wrong with that and they're all for mar mar migrant labor. Yeah, they're like, well, it's what are we going to do? They, they don't think, oh, well, let's boost the minimum wage there so that farm laborers are paid the same as everyone else. No, they don't think that. But they think, okay, well, maybe we should give them all citizenship then. And it's like, what? We don't even, without uh, uh, screening them to see what kind of people they are, what values they have, what level of education. I mean... If you're importing people to work and they don't have a high enough a, a level of education, what are you? They're not going to get good jobs. And what are you going to just? There's already unemployment, so you're importing people to do so that you can maintain your kind of um, 